the recent stability AI saga is quite a roller coaster, and I feel like we have a lot to catch up. As they were once the king in open source AI, how did they fumble this hard and completely butcher the new release of Stable Diffusion 3? So for today, I'll quickly recap everything from the recent stability AI news to the painful launch of Stable Diffusion 3. Back in February 2024, Stability AI announced Stable Diffusion 3, a new iteration of image generation model that aimed to bring forth the next wave of AI image generation. In the sample images they provide, it has one of the best generation qualities we have ever seen from a base model with the main selling point of being able to generate text coherently within an image. It completely abandoned UNET and replaced it with MMDIT, which is based on the latest hot new architecture called Diffusion Transformers that OpenAI Sora was also based on. While Stable Diffusion 3 is looking as promising as ever, all there really is for this announcement is to tease what they have been cooking so far with a bit of information like the model sizes which ranges from 800 million to 8 billion parameters and a waitlist that probably only a handful has ever gotten in. Two weeks after the announcement, they released a paper for Stable Diffusion 3 down to the very details for its model architectures and it looks incredible. From the numerical benchmarks to the test images, it's just overall a huge step up. And looking at how the images are prompted, they have fully committed to using descriptive sentences instead of adding words like writing in a CSV file. However, everything started to crumble from here on. For a long time, there have been a lot of rumors about how Stability AI is running out of money, all from credible sources too. And two weeks later after the paper was published, the founding researchers like Robin Rombach and many others who wrote the latent diffusion papers and joined Stability AI that kickstarted Stable Diffusion left Stability with not much information given. Then, Emad, the founder of Stability AI, also steps down as the CEO just a few days after this happened. Some people might have saw this coming, but this is probably the biggest shock of them all. However, he is not completely gone as he himself is still the investor of the company, but has certainly distanced himself as told from his recent tweet. Along with this news, Forbes wrote a hit piece about Emad called How Stability AI's Founder Tanked His Billion Dollar Startup. As usual to their dedication at making bad press about Stability AI, this time they added a ton of crazy information. But before that, in the Reddit post about this article, Emad personally replied with his perspective and made a clear breakdown on what was real and what was inaccurate in the article. So to pretty much sum it all up, it was that Emad couldn't monetize the company well enough, mismanaged people, was not consistent with his targets, and made quite a few enemies in the industry, hence a lot of targeted bad press. Then another two weeks later, a pretty crazy but kind of expected headline by the register stated that Stability AI reportedly ran out of cash to pay its bills for rented GPUs. In summary, they basically had 11 million in revenue but has a 153 million in cloud spendings plus salaries which was definitely not sustainable. With a failed fundraising by EMAT to hit the goals, this has been suspected as the main reason why he stepped down. So the COO and the new CTO became the interim CEOs with layoffs and restructuring being done internally roughly two weeks after. But in the midst of this restructuring, SD3 API was released. In its blog, other than the introductions to the APIs, they promised that weights would soon be released, but still got a lot of people worrying about that it'll never get released with the recent structural changes. But fast forward two months later, SD3 weights have actually been officially released, called Stable Diffusion 3 Medium. We'll come back to the sizing later. And this good news pretty much made a huge 180 right away with probably one of the most controversial open source licensing ever. But does it really deserve the bad reputation as people say? Let's quickly find out. Overall, it does look like a pretty standard non-commercial use license with a purchasable commercial use license, which they have actually been doing ever since December 2023. The feedback initially from the community was really good too, with people volunteering to pay subscription for a commercial use creator license or even multiple ones, even though they don't use it commercially. Some people just want to support Stability AI since a lot of people found out from rumors that they are doing bad financially. But what people have problems with this time is their new creator license agreement for commercial use. I repeat, commercial use. And of course, what I am about to tell you is not legal advice as I am not a lawyer nor familiar with legal text, but a lot of things I've been seeing around are a bit incorrect, like what Olivio mentioned in his video. And to make sure I don't also get it wrong myself, I asked McMonkey to fact check for what I'm about to say. As he was a stability AI dev until a few weeks ago, he has a good perspective of looking at this from within 
in and outside of the company. And he dug into it himself for the amount of, I wouldn't say drama, but, but just quote unquote feedbacks he's receiving as an ex-dev. So first of all, you only need to get these monthly subscriptions if you are making money off SD models and the 20 bucks a month creator license only applies to you under these conditions. And if you go over on any of these conditions, you will need to inquire for an enterprise license. And the part that is certainly the most controversial is if you scroll down and look at the FAQs, there's a term saying the number of images generated is limited to 6,000 images per month with a creator license. In Olivio's video, he took this as you are allowed to generate 6,000 images per month. And with the bad state SD3 is in, that means you are basically limited to 200 images per day. A quick batch prompt testing easily goes over to 100 in a blink of an eye. But if you add in the context, what it actually means is that you are allowed to generate 6,000 images per month commercially. And that makes a world of difference. For individual creators, if you generate images for fun, that doesn't count. It only starts to count if you sell or make money from the generated image. And the maximum sale you can make is limited to 6,000 unique generations per month. And other than this perspective, it also seems heavily meant to only apply on paid generation services, where a customer pays a website to generate images. And this FAQ is more specific for businesses to decide whether to purchase a creator or enterprise license. So unless you have an AI only fence and sells more than 6,000 unique generations, or you are an image generation service provider that generates more than 6,000 images, this term has probably nothing to do with you at all. Additionally, there are quite a lot of other misunderstandings too. And with a video sitting at 64K views right now, I think these clarifications really needs to be made. In 316, to clarify even more what derivative work means, it includes fine-tuned models based on SD3 or models fine-tuned using the outputs of SD3. The images that are generated from SD3 does not fall under this definition. In 529, where he mentioned that you and your customers must cease to use SD3 when you stop paying for the licensing fee, it is important to note that you only need to cease commercial usage, and it has no relation to whatever he's about to say next. In 609, he mentioned how the new license would require you to destroy the models you have or trained if you stop paying. But here you can see that he didn't highlight the word confidential information. And if you go to the agreement and scroll down, you can see this term is defined as non-public information. So would probably include things you've signed NDA for or given a beta preview of. So what it means by destroying is destroying the confidential information, which is a pretty normal term that most agreements have and not referring to SD3 models or fine tunes that you have. In 751, this is also a pretty standard term where its sole purpose on Stability AI's part is to redirect the legal responsibility to you if there's any wrongdoings when you are using their product. What this basically means is if people get in trouble using SD3 like generating Disney characters, Disney would sue you and Stability AI would not be held responsible. All in all, I think he didn't make the point of commercial use as clear, but this license still had some problems since now it hugely clashes with how the largest stable diffusion model hosting website, Civit AI, operates. With this new agreement, Civitai temporarily banned all the SD3 models and fine tunes that are on the website until their lawyers have thoroughly gone through the agreement. And five days later, the ban became official. Civitai is not imposing this ban as a protest, but they may get in legal trouble since other than assisting model distributions, they are a platform that aims to help model creators monetize their work, so the aspect of commercial use licensing is what they are worried about, as how they would need to reinforce this new rule is pretty much impractical right now, especially with how deeply intervened model training, sharing, and merging is in the community, this licensing could easily risk all the stable diffusion ecosystem with the current lack of clarity. Hopefully, Civitai and Stability AI can find a middle ground to solve all these, because getting banned from Civit AI is a big deal. Pretty much all the fine tunes and developments of AI image generations are shared through Civit AI. Additionally, most of the improvements are done by individual devs and without having a hub for people to exchange models freely, it can damage the ecosystem surrounding SD3 and the developments might become stagnant. All previous successes like SD1.5 and SDXL are all driven by the open source community too. This ban pretty much means the developments of SD3 is hindered drastically. Boycotts are probably not needed for SD3 to fail at this point. But you think things can't get any worse? Well, let's talk about the actual SD3 
three ways they have released. More specifically, from a range of model sizes they have, they released a medium model, which is a 2B model in this case. And when people prompted a girl laying on the grass on SD3, this is what they got. For pretty much a state-of-the-art model that Stability AI has been teasing like this for the last four months, this is what the community got in return, which then hammered the entire community with extreme disappointment. People then joked about how for safety reasons, you can now only generate male bodies and not female bodies as females anatomy would look like Cronenberg's from Rick and Morty. Some people suspected that for safety reasons and to keep the model from generating anything not safe for work, the released weights are tampered after safety tuning. However, according to MacMonkey, in early pre-trainings, the model is already bad with anatomy. And since there is no way they would not have done any other safety tuning, the result resulting way is probably a combination of safety tuning issue and a data issue. But anyways, here are some other theories as to why SD3 mediums suck. First, it is intentional from them to gatekeep the quality between open source and their API. Second, it is the train inference gap, which means that what the model is trained on is not what people are using. As using a caption generated from ChatGPT often gives far better results than the brief captions people are used to in other versions of Stable Diffusion. Third, it might be a lack of good data in general as anatomy-related images were completely removed from the dataset. Fourth, the safety team got wonky before the release of 2B, which is what Emat said himself even though he has not been involved for over 12 weeks. They could be modifying weights directly or adding some funny stuff like what the red teaming did to Gemini with the forced diversity. From what I've seen so far, the second theory seems to be the most on point, as the model is apparently really bad at generating anything based on on short prompts when the poses could be extremely complex. And when you prompt it correctly, it should also be living up to its name as Stabilities or even the current best base model. It is actually one of the better models at tackling human anatomy in very unique positions too. It just seems to be a coincidence that laying on the grass is bad and everyone just memeing about it. Previous models like the base SD 1.5 can't do it either. I think right now people have an unfair expectation of a base model not being able to perform on par with fine tunes plus high res fix with tiling on top of whatever juicing Laura. So, so far so good, right? Well, well, well. Soon after the release of SD3, Confi Anonymous, the dev behind Confi UI that also worked closely with Stability has resigned from the company. Along with this news, some screenshots from his public discord has shed light into the training of SD3 and the range of models they had. First, with a confirmation on there's no sensor layers in SD3, then Confi stated that he didn't work on 2B but instead it worked on T54B, which the corp dropped it soon after. What's even more surprising is that Comfy was confident about his 4B for being safer, but the corp still chose 2B, which is apparently a failed experiment dropped by the people who resigned, most likely Robin and the others, and its pre-training was also full of problems, which might have hinted about the anatomy issue. The only reasonable explanation I could think of why the corp released the 2B model is probably because they thought they can use this model as a low tier model to attract more people to use their paid API. But I think right now it's doing the completely opposite as it kind of instead demonstrate how bad they can screw up a model, which would cast the idea that the paid model could be like this too. With the screenshots ending on how the main focus in stability AI is not making the best model anymore and Confi wants to make the best model that would fit on a consumer GPU for everyone as the reason he resigned, things makes a lot more sense now. Feel free to support him by visiting his new project, Confi Org, which he started with many others, including MacMonkey, who I mentioned earlier and also helped me for this video. And you can read about what they plan to do in this blog here. And with the latest Stability AI news being them revealing their new CEO and got bailed out by an investor group led by Sean Parker, Stability AI definitely has a lot to work on internally. And I guess we can only wait and see where Stability AI goes from here. Wish them all the best and don't forget about the communities that got them so far too. And before we end this video, if you are interested in using API for more than image generation with the flexibility of calling other LLM models and is completely optimized out of mind with TensorRT to reduce your cost, let me quickly introduce you to NVIDIA NIM where users can experience accelerated generative AI models and the latest AI foundation models. It is basically a set of easy to use microservices designed to accelerate the deployment of generative AI models across the cloud, data center, and workstation 
applications. With its main features include NVIDIA's top tier level security and control of generative AI applications and data, pre-built cloud native microservices with high throughput AI inference that scales with cloud, support for fine-tuned models out of the box, single command deploy, support for multi-LoRa loading at inference time, and Langchain and Llama Index integration, this is probably one of the most well-rounded API support that anyone has ever offered. With dev blogs and documentations that help you easily onboard and get started with NVIDIA NIM, you can now check it out too using the link down in the description. And if you want to keep up with the latest AI research, definitely check out my newsletter where I publish research breakdowns on many cool papers that I don't have time to make videos for. A big shout out to Andrew Lascellias, Chris Ledoux, Alex J, Deegan, Alex Maurice, Migulim, Fafau, Robert Zaviasa, and many others that support me through Patreon or YouTube. Follow my Twitter if you haven't, and I'll see y'all in the next one.